Hello there, it's Stieg Plantel, demonstrating frame-by-frame -frame animation in Animate CC. I will be showing and exploring this caterpillar here. If you play it by hitting enter, that's it playing in the program. But let's render it out so we have a little better flow here. Okay, so looking at the sequence, it's pretty good. Pretty happy with it. What we are looking at is some anticipatory anticipation here. <laughs> and then it's overshoot and then slow in and slow out on either end of the action. Those are some of Disney's principles of animation that uh, were highlighted in a book from uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson. These 12 animation principles explore stretch and squash, the anticipation, staging, straight ahead or pose to pose animation, Two, those are the two types, two techniques, follow through and overlapping action, slow in and slow out, arcs, secondary action, timing, exaggeration, solid drawing, appeal, appeal is important, doesn't always mean that things are just cute, solid drawing is just that, Form, drawing form with depth and purpose. Exaggeration doesn't mean you're distorting or, or contorting. It means that you're just making, you're amplifying the emotion. Timing is all about how many frames it takes to do an action. You can explore that anything from one to nine to ten in between frames and and what kind of feeling that that communicates when you uh, watch that. Secondary action is the most misunderstood one I found. Secondary action is sometimes confused with overlapping and follow through or, or just overlapping specifically. Secondary action is about a secondary character trait being displayed in a sequence that further pushes the storyline. Like a stunned character shakes his head, gets up to his feet. Sad character wipes away a tear. Slow in and slow out is necessary unless you're doing snap pose animation, which is a totally different style, which is much like South Park and modern cartoons. Follow through and overlap. So follow through is like we're seeing with the caterpillar. He's he's overshooting, he's following through with the action, he's overshooting it, and then the overlap, there isn't much overlap in this because he doesn't have a tail or any hair or floppy parts, but the the skin the skin might be an issue, but if we wanted to add some of his big cheeks full of food, full of a uh, sweet, unripe tomato, when he pulls back, maybe his cheeks could wobble and do overlapping action when he settles into place. That might be a great addition. I This animation was done pose to pose, as we can see with this. original The original setup was boom, anticipation, bite, and back to starting pose. It's a looping thing. Staging is about how you present the information, how the audience is able to pick up clues and, and make and put together the pieces as, as the story unfolds. Anticipation is just that. As the character leans back, and you know, winding up into some big move, boom, that's a big move right there from open mouth to bite, all within one frame. That's what gives it the power. There could probably be a frame or two in there 
to on either end of the action. You turn on the onion skinning, and you can see see all the poses that are necessary for that. There could probably be one there and maybe one here. You wouldn't put one right in the middle, as you would think an in-between frame would be, because then it then it looks very linear and mechanical. So you'd have a pose maybe here and a pose maybe here. Stretch and squash is not just for cartoons or a tunish action. If you did a little bit of this with your with your characters in realistic animation, like your CG animations, your hyper hyper realistic type things, or your super hyper stylized things. This this principle is very important. It's mostly talking about not just that the skull stretches like here, his skull is actually stretching, right? The top part of his head is hinging back almost on its own and exaggerating this bite but it also includes the fact that your muscles are made of flesh and the, the bones. The bones are more solid. So you have the juxtaposition of those two moving through space. This caterpillar, I believe, is an, has an exoskeleton and he doesn't have bones. So your artistic liberties allow you to do mostly whatever you want there. But just, just keep the rules in mind or the ideas that, that have been developed through the last 100 and, 117 years of, of uh, animation. And just understand that those are good things to call upon when you need them. Now, how to do this animation. How to do it. If we go back to an original beginning file, you can see that we're going to need, here's the onion skin. You can see this by hovering over it. Onion skin. This allows you to see all poses if you unlock it on that layer. Womp, womp, womp. So if we were to draw something in between, we would click where we want. We would hit F7, or come up here and go modify, or I'm sorry, insert hmm. timeline frame, keyframe, or blank frame. It's too bad they don't have the shortcuts on the side of there. That's why I'm saying blank keyframe is F7. A keyframe is F6. So 5, F5, F6, F7. Makes you faster and more efficient as an artist. I'm using Y. This paintbrush tool is really fantastic for uh, let's just take this outline color. That's from the tomato but all of this is just drawn with the same color. Okay so we want to go from I'm using the carrots or the, the uh, greater than and less than keys or the comma and period same key to advance through the frames in this program so if you want to snap forward or if we want to come out of this anticipation and ease up into something like this we're gonna start drawing just start drawing something like not necessarily right in between but something that's starting to smooth in to the next action and you're gonna draw between the green is where you're going. When you see these slight green, that's mean where it's heading. This is blue. Means that's where you've been. Okay? So you're gonna do something like this. This isn't about drawing this time, it's about oh, there's one thing that might be very helpful. Drawing mode on, that means it's grouping every line you make, so they don't interact with one another when they cross. So here we go, we're just flowing you can always go in and edit but the idea oh yeah there's one there I always remind everyone to draw by pulling down pulling your strokes as opposed to pushing them pushing would be like this that's not as elegant 
a result as doing something like that. So here we are. Boom, boom. And then if you work at that quite a bit, you're going to get something that looks more like this, right? Just come in a little bit. And you, have, of course, have to go in and edit the lines. You, can, you don't have to always redraw them. You can click on them. Make sure that layer's unlocked and hit A. And that allows you to select these anchor points and then move them like that. Bezier handles work like you would expect in Illustrator, in Maya, anything like that. Okay, same with Animate CC. So you keep working at it, you keep working at it. Here's a file that has, here's a file that has roughish, roughish animation. Right? And you can see I'm putting color on another line. I think it's faster to an, uh, edit and change color if you put them on another line as opposed to filling in between here with the paint bucket tool or something and wanting to um, wanting to let's go down here make a little demo of this fill close large gaps let's see if we can do it no not that frame See, then you have just this issue. I'm messing around with this when I could just be down here painting, right? Just painting. Paint it in. It doesn't even have to be perfect. And to prove that to you, this is coming from a recovering perfectionist. The only way you're going to get your animations done is if you move along. So let's go to this one. It looks so elegant and it seems really it's it's pretty darn good why don't we look at it really close and look at some layers turned off here might as well delete that one Just block up uh, turn off the fruit and the tomato plant look it's not perfect it's just in the face the face you want to have some fairly refined work but because that's where your eyeballs are but look this is not Perfect. If you were doing an illustration, yeah, there's a little bit of paint there. No problem. No one sees that kind of thing when this thing is running along at full speed, which is 12 frames a second in this case. So, helping you understand where to put your energy and where not to waste your time so that you can be effective and successful. All right. Thanks for watching. This is Steve Plantel. And this is how to animate frame by frame in Animate CC. Thanks for watching.